Rose. That's right. That's right. Nice to meet you guys. Very nice to meet Today you. Today your guest is American Thank you for joining us. What is the best way to describe your career? Oh, the best way. The best way to describe my career would be. Uh, this sounds vague and not specific, but ongoing. Because I. I can't tell you what my favorite match is. I can't tell you what my favorite incarnation of me is, but I'd like to think that I'm figuring it out as I go. You know, a long way to go. So, ongoing. Yeah, do you know Saskatoon's professional wrestling, wrestling history? I could, uh, I could cheat and look at what you got there. Bret Hart won his first WWE World Title in October 19. I didn't know that. Stu Hart was born in Saskatoon, Rod, Robbie Water. Piper, right? I didn't see. Was born in Saskatoon, too. I knew Piper was from Saskatoon. I didn't know that the player, uh, the player Brett match happened because that's one of my favorites. Is that the same? I wonder. You guys should look it up. A little research. I wonder if it's the same one where. Brett, say, uh, Brett says, even the biggest dreams can't come true. I think it is. I think it's that same show. And I think Stu Hart might be in the crowd. Otherwise, I've got a completely different memory of this. But Saskatoon's got a lot of history. That's cool. Fire away. Uh, I gave everything a shot. Uh, where I grew up in Marietta, Georgia, I gave uh, and literally everything. Taekwondo, gymnastics, um, Little League Baseball. My dad was really into baseball. He was a really good baseball player. People don't uh, they don't know that. He was a really good baseball player. And then uh, I got into amateur wrestling or folk style wrestling and also pound ball football. And I carried those through to high school. And then when I got into high school, I wanted to really be good at uh, folk style wrestling. So that became my solo sport. Treated it kind of like a business, like a career. Uh, was pretty good at it. It's pretty good, yeah. What was your favorite sport to Oh, it's definitely, it was definitely amateur wrestling, folk style, but uh, I wish it had been baseball. I wish I had been better at baseball, because anytime you like, caught a line drive or, or got a decent hit, like that's such a great feeling, and I didn't get that often because I wasn't that athletic or good. Um, so I wish I had been better. That probably would have been my favorite. Have you ever played ice hockey? No. I've never, I've never even, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a, a puck on the ice. I've, I've skated a bit because we were talking prior to the interview. My, my wife, Brandy, uh, used to be a figure skater and she teaches power skating. Uh, Which is shown actually. Yeah, but she, uh, she, I've never, uh, I've never played any type of hockey other than street hockey. I don't know if street hockey is a big thing in Canada. In the States, it's a big thing. It's more like lazy hockey. Uh, no, no, I've never done it. Actually, sometimes for like ice hockey, yeah. like people play ice hockey, um, it's kind of like a, street hockey is kind of like a, Practice gotcha. You a pretty good skater? I'm actually uh, pretty good. Yeah? Pretty. That's cool. That's a very good skill. That's a good skill. And I'm one of the most defensive and passing people. So you're a big defense, big defense guy? Yeah. Is this your team right here? Uh, yeah. Did we get it some love? You want me to show the camera? Look at that. Yeah. Also, Hockey club. Hockey club. I like it. I like it. Did you ever want to pursue wrestling to go to the Olympics? Oh, uh, I went. I actually, uh, in 1996, I saw Kurt Angle win his gold medal. It's one of the events that when the Olympics came to Atlanta, that's right nearby Marietta, Marta was free, tickets were easy to get, and tickets for freestyle wrestling were not that popular and me and my mom went and I saw Kurt Angle win and I get such a kick out of that because years later here I am uh, Kurt's last independent match was at the Northeast Wrestling with me in a cage in Hartford and uh, I don't think I even have told him that story ever but I thought personally I wasn't good enough to even I was worried about even moving on to the collegiate level because in Georgia 
wrestling competitively is, is not that competitive. It's a lot of athletes cutting weight for football and stuff like that, staying in shape. And then in the Northeast and the Midwest, that's where wrestling is really like nitty gritty. So I do summer summer league and stuff like that and I do okay. But I, uh, I don't think I ever had Olympic aspirations. I hate to say it, probably anything involved with professional wrestling. Like a cameraman, a, I don't know, a writer, a, a, a runner for wrestling. I just, it got in my blood at an early age and I find that I'm happiest when I'm around it. So, I don't know. I didn't have a backup plan, which I don't recommend. You should always have, always have a backup plan, but I didn't. I kind of have a backup plan. If hockey fails, at least I can know a little bit of hockey and I can coach hockey or something yeah. else with it. There you go. There you go. So so what's kind of your, what, what, you what is your favorite city to wrestle in? Ooh, favorite city? Uh, it, it, it goes back and forth. Um, it goes back and forth between probably Chicago and Philadelphia. Uh, but I, I love all. Pretty much, I can really, there's not many places I think of that I don't love to wrestle in front of, but I, it's easier for me to tell you my least favorite place to wrestle, which is Winnipeg. I don't know if you guys know a lot about Winnipeg. We've actually gone there before, and we saw a huge event episode in yeah? Winnipeg. Why, why is Winnipeg your least The worst fans in the world. Ask, ask the Tyson Kidd. He's a he's a Canadian. He, he he'll tell you I'm not lying. They're just it's uh, I don't know. They maybe it's the venue there in Winnipeg, but it's, they've seen everything. They knew about Stampede. They just yell inside jokes during the match. And this is multiple visits that I have made my proclamation that Winnipeg was the worst. Winnipeg is the worst. But on the flip side of all of that, not that they're close or anything, but one of my favorite places to wrestle is also Calgary. You know? So one of that's that Saddle Dome, that whole area is bonkers for wrestling. So it's not a it's not a Canada thing. It's a Winnipeg thing. What makes Japanese crowds different to North American crowds? Uh, a, lot, a lot of things. That, Japanese culture is so different in the in the first place. Well, I mean, a very noticeable thing right out of the gate is that they don't necessarily ooh ah and stand up and sit down and go crazy. They do a lot of uh, clapping. So whereas like here you'll hear these wild chants and stuff like that. There you'll do something, bam, boom, boom, or you'll you'll get out of a submission or whatever, and you'll just hear a clapping and it gets very quiet and also they really respect the the length of a match if a match goes over like 15 minutes they really start to settle into it if it's short it's almost like it's almost like a pass by for them like oh here i've seen i like these guys yeah but they like to really settle in with their matches yeah that's why okada and uh, tanahashi and some of those matches just gets electric out there okada and Omega from last year's Osaka. I mean, just electric because they went 60 minutes. Yeah, that's a that's a cool cool element to it. What do you what do you um uh, eat bad food? Uh, I guess probably one of the big things I like to do is I have a Siberian Husky that's five years old. He's like my best friend, so I like to hang out with him as much as possible. Brandy and I, because we're on the road together, usually we're pretty spent when we get home. A lot of lounging, a lot of Netflix, a lot of obligatory gym visits, but uh, yeah, hang out with Pharaoh. You ever see my dog? I'm sure you picture him. He's really handsome. Show you a picture. There's room in there. Not in the, not in the got three dogs. In there. Yeah, look at that guy. Yeah. Look at him. Right? I don't know if you can see him. I actually have three cats. You got three cats? Yeah. Oh, wow. At home. It's just one of them. Just, it's a girl and it just wants to keep itself away. Like, just, I don't know. But I don't know if it dislikes us or just doesn't want to be near us. So it's always gone. Well, that's the thing with cats, that you gotta earn their trust. It's actually like, just a, like a poodle. Yeah. Like a poodle cat, and it just doesn't really like any. Maybe it looks. And it's 
It's been here and with us since it was three. And Maybe it loves you. Maybe it's just a matter of like, I've got a chihuahua that's very similar. Basically just sits at a distance. You say hi to it. That's about it. It doesn't really like attention. It's light. You know? It's content. Who's your favorite superhero? Why? Uh, that's an easy one. I'm a Batman guy. Uh, I've never changed. I've never waned on that. Uh, the reason being, I think Batman has a plan for every eventuality. So when people start coming up with, well, Superman's a god, essentially. He could beat Batman. You forget that Batman's got the kryptonite ring in his belt. You know what I'm saying? His utility belt. He's got a plan for every eventuality. Sometimes too many plans. There isn't anyone on this planet. Never let anyone convince you that Batman can be beat. He cannot be beat. And I know that DC movies aren't as much, or aren't as popular as the overall MCU, but it doesn't matter. Thanos, that whole situation in Infinity War, no spoilers here, Batman would have taken care of it. Totally. Always put your trust in Batman. Very important. Uh, which do you prefer? Heroes prefer? Heroes or villains? <laughs> I think, uh, I oddly don't really believe in either anymore. I feel like today is, especially even with wrestling or with comics or any like fantasy genre, today people like that gray area more than they like the black and more than they like the white. Uh, that everyone has some sort of justification for their actions. I know that sounds kind of like a cop-out answer. So if I had to lean any way on the scale, maybe villains, because I'm often portrayed as a villain in the ring, so maybe villains, maybe. Favorite fictional character? Just all of them. Ooh. Ooh. This is kind of a maybe. Um, no, I guess it's not a stretch because it's the most popular of all. But uh, my favorite book growing up was Bram Stoker's Dracula. The book is outstanding. And then the Francis Ford Coppola, kind of pretty much to the to the book to a T uh, interpretation, is outstanding. Yeah. Most important, most important piece of advice anyone has ever given. Most important piece of advice, probably with wrestling, pertaining to wrestling, was don't let anyone ever convince you you're not the biggest star in the ring. And that gets very tricky and very hard in this genre in wrestling because everyone's a star, you know, and it's there's a difference between stealing the limelight and earning it, I suppose. So that was always something to motivate when you were in there with some really big names or, you know, powerful characters. Famous people. Yeah, like famous people, yeah. Yeah. Don't let anyone ever convince you that the, that you can't be that or that you aren't that already. What's what is the most important piece of advice you've ever given? Did you just ask No. No, there was a um have you have given anyone. Oh that I've given to somebody? Yeah. Oh. I don't give good advice. I actually have a t shirt that says spend it now, make more later and I couldn't I mean, I honestly, in this moment, will tell you that's terrible advice. That's bad advice, but it's funny, and it's, it has truly been my life motto. All In is a good example. We spent a lot of money on that, hoping we would make more later. We did, um, even though the show hasn't happened yet. But, uh, yeah. So, best, worst, are you? Yeah, I'm... Tom literally just spends everything away. There you go. Spend it now, make more later. Right? I literally just keep it in so I can buy something expensive. Well, you guys balance each other out. My wife is really good about fiscal responsibility, so I feel like I don't need to be. You know, she got it. She got it.